In today's video, we're finally going to finish this. Why? Because I said I would. And also because they make it like that. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Tim, and I'm trying out a new thing with YouTube where I actually post videos on my channel. And I love all things model trains. More specifically, I do videos about weathering and graffitiing model trains. I model and scale personally, but I work on every scale that you can think of. I love them all. I just only have space for end scale, so that's where I'm at. Now, last week, if you saw, I posted a video on this car here. If you haven't seen that video, you can watch it right here. I just did the graffiti on one side, and honestly, I stopped making the video and wanted to post it because I was feeling tired, so I called it a day and posted the video. But now we're gonna finish the car. The other side, as you can see, is completely blank. I've actually gone ahead and I've drawn a sketch of what I want to put on this car, and <laughs> if that's not subliminable, I don't know what is. So go ahead, if, if you're liking this drawing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell so that you're notified every single time I post a video. I promise you, I'm trying to be more consistent now. So I'm not sure if you can see this or not, because it's kind of hard to see the pencil lines on the car before I do anything else with it, but I've gone ahead and done the pencil outlines. I'm gonna stick with what I did the last time around and use these metallic markers because I'm really loving how they how they came across last time. You gotta believe me when I say that every train guy in Canada has one of these cans in their uh, in their basement with train stuff in it and if you're not Canadian I'm, I guess I don't know Folgers what do you guys drink down there? It's not it's not Tim Hortons but I just need a base coat once again, just like last week. I'm going to use this silver because it just looked fantastic the last time. It went on so smooth and I'm actually going to try and cover it with another color but I just needed that base coat to separate from the background color of the car because the car is really dark in comparison to the color that I want to use which is a red. I thought I could find a marker that would work that was red. But instead, I'm using paint from a paint marker that I don't trust anymore because it explodes when I try to draw with it. But I'm actually just gonna apply it with a Q-tip. And I'm just gonna take it and just dab it on. And that dabbing effect is actually gonna make it have a really cool texture. It's gonna kinda look like a spray can when it's finished. I use this technique a lot when I'm applying paint as a base coat instead of using those glitter markers. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with it. Now the only thing that I'm finding with this paint is it's actually kind of coming across a bit pink. But I think once all is said and done and we weather it and kind of dull it down with like a grimy black, it's gonna, it's gonna darken it back up so that it looks like, like a red again. All right, so just like last time, we are going in with Sharpie pens. I put an S on the end there. Sharpie pens because you are going to need more than one. They die real fast when you draw on plastic and they dry even faster when you draw on paint. I love these Sharpie ultra fine, they call them the extra fine point paint markers. Not the pens, but the paint markers. You have to be really careful that they don't explode. But for little details like putting some small little dots here and there, as long as you're quick about it, and you can you watch your tip and you make sure that it's not about to explode. And then you go and you kind of empty it off on a piece of paper. And then the nice thing too is all that paint that's now exploded on a random business card, you can still use. You just dip the tip of the uh, paint marker in there like a paintbrush and you can still use it. So it's not, um, it's not a waste. I'm just using all of that paint that was exploded out on that business card and I'm just using that as the background color and just painting it on using this like it's a paintbrush. So I'm actually going to show you a technique of weathering that I haven't done in a long time. Once I discovered that makeup technique, I haven't gone back. It's such a handy technique. And if you haven't seen that, I'm going to go ahead and link it right there so you can check it out. I weathered an entire car just using eyeliner. But for this one, I'm going to use something that's that you probably already have because I'm pretty sure you don't have eyeliner in your toolbox. This is weathering powder. This is AIM weathering powder. I bought these about eight years ago and I'm just 
below maybe a third of the way through to rust colors. The black and the gray, I've used a good amount, but in eight years, I mean, you can't beat that with a stick. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a dark rust, and I always start with the roof of the car first, and then I work my way down. Because like I said before, that is how gravity works. Now I'm gonna scoop some of this up with a Q-tip. I like to use a Q-tip. They're handy, they're cheap, they go a long way. You can use them for a lot of different things. And I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna just lay on a good, heavy, thick, dark line with the dark rust all the way down the middle of the car. You wanna kinda have your line thin out at the end a little bit, and thicker in the middle. And what you're gonna wanna do is take the other side of the Q-tip and just kinda brush it one way and the other way back and forth. You're not trying to like take the weathering powder right off of the car. Like you're not brushing it off onto your desk or anything like that. You're just kind of spreading it. Then what you're gonna do is take more of the dark rust and do that a second time, but not quite as heavy. Just kind of dabbing it on across the middle just to accentuate the middle again. And then what you're gonna want to do is repeat the process with the light rust. But you're not gonna spread it this time. You're just gonna put a little bit, just like a highlight. Yeah, that's looking like something. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll take a, a clean Q-tip and just one of the panels, I'll just kinda spread it heavily like I'm trying to clear it off. Just to give a variant in the in the roof, like maybe they replaced a panel or something like that. Maybe I'll do another one down here. There you go, there's your roof. So I'm actually gonna seal this with dull coat before I move on because I don't want the powder to fall off when I tip the car over. So now that that's dry, that's starting to look like something. We're gonna move on to the sides now and I'm gonna do them basically the same on either side. What I'll do is I'll start again with the dark rust and similar to what I did with the makeup, I'm just gonna run some streaks down from the top, but it's just gonna be a fairly light weathering. It's not gonna be super heavy. I find that the makeup will give it a much heavier look. What I'll see a lot is a rust streak right over top of the actual white in the logo. It stands out a lot, so it's, it's nice to replicate that. Overall, the powder just kinda gives it a nice faded look. Don't be afraid to go right over the graffiti in spots because, I mean, weathering still happens after graffiti is done. That's why I like to do the graffiti first, is because it blends the whole car together. Now you can actually see that the, the white is faded and it just makes it look that much better. Grimy black, fresh Q-tip. I'm just gonna lay it on and what I like to do is a bit of a U shape. Grime on cars tends to be a lot higher on the ends because that's where the wheel will kick up the dirt from the track. There you go. And now, last but not least, we will seal it up with Tester's Dull Coat. That just seals everything in, gives it a nice dull look, and your car is done. So there you have it, folks. That is part two of this car, this HO Scale CN box car that has now been weathered and graffitied on both sides. And I'm super happy with how it looks. If you like this video and you found it educational or entertaining or both, Feel free to give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you want to see more content like this. And I will see you in the next video.